Have you ever been scrolling through Instagram and you come across a video like this, where you see this nice, beautiful, colorful, stainless TIG weld, and then the person goes ahead and does something like this to it? Well, in this video, we're gonna explore what's actually going on and if they're crazy or not. And spoiler alert, in this case, he actually is. Now, I don't actually think Dabs Wellington is crazy for doing what he did in that video to that really nice stainless weld, but to put out as much content as he does on Instagram, you have to be a little crazy, right? But anyway, um, I grabbed some what I believe is 304 stainless coupons here, and we're gonna weld these up and do a little bit of our own testing. All right, now that our engineering overlords have told us that both of these welds are going to rust and they just cannot stay like this, we're gonna explore some ways to protect them. So I'm gonna start off with just trying to clean them up. So in the past, um, people used pickling paste. I'm sure people use it now, I don't really know. Like I said, I'm learning this as we go. And pickling paste's main ingredient is hydrofluoric acid. And from what I understand, it literally just removes the surface layer of metal and exposes fresh raw stainless. So that's what we're gonna do on half of one of these with some conditioning disc. This is like a Scotch-Brite. It's actually a surface conditioning disc because these are from Empire Abrasives. And it's a brand new one, so there's no iron or anything on here. And then I have a stainless steel wire brush. And I'm gonna clean off, on this one I'm probably gonna leave, actually maybe we'll do it on this one. We'll leave maybe one third undone. And then since I wanna use two methods, I'm gonna do a little bit here and a little bit here of each of these. And these are gonna be the pieces we're gonna test on and see how they rust. We're gonna do that at the end. Okay, for this first one, I'm gonna use the stainless steel wire wheel. This is not a brand new wire wheel, so keep that in mind because the thing is with anything that's been used on regular steel before, you could be depositing iron on the surface of the stainless. For the next one, we have a brand new Scotch-Brite wheel or surface conditioning disc from Empire Abrasives. This is the medium, and I'm just gonna lightly go over it. And for our next sample, we're going to actually get to the method that we saw in the video, which is electro-polishing. This uses a chemical and electricity and a little brush, apparently. This was sent to me by TIG brush uh, to try out. I've never used one of these before. Oh, it actually came with more stuff. So besides the chemicals that we need, um, there's a ground clamp similar to a welder. So I'm assuming I can hook this up to my table. And it's powered just by a normal like 110, 120 plug. And then they sent two different uh, positive sides for the brush. This little like gun looking thing, which I think allows you to adjust the length of the brush and the brush comes out of here. I haven't hooked that one up yet. And then the one I did set up a little bit is the actual wand. So these brushes, I'm assuming this stays on here and it's got a little plastic coating on here. I don't think you have to take it off. I tried looking at the instructions. So hopefully I'm not doing anything wrong. And then there's a little shield on here and that just screws in the end of the wand. It came with two different bags of brushes and first I thought it was just a lot of brushes. From what I can tell, these are threaded and kind of triangle shaped and I think these are for the wand. 
And then these have no threads and they're more round. And I believe these are for the gun. I'm not sure what they call it. This is the shroud, just like this right here. And then in here's the clasp. So with that screwed all the way down and this backed off some, you screw it clockwise till this is pushed all the way out, which kind of opens up the jaw, I think. And then the round brushes that have no threads, just seats in there. And then when you turn it counterclockwise, you can see it's sucking it back in. So you can, you gotta dip both these brushes in the chemical that they provide. I have an outlet right in front of my table. So I'm just gonna put this up here and plug her in right here. And then I'm gonna hook the ground or the earth clamp right to the table. Hopefully this isn't a problem. And then the wand to the positive side. The controls are pretty simple. Um, there's a power button on the back. So now we're on, but it's in sleep. Single brush, that's what we hooked up. I'm not using wide, so we're gonna put it on single brush. We want turbo clean. This can also polish and mark, but for now we're gonna be cleaning the weld. This is the actual cleaning fluid that comes with it. And then there's some neutralizing fluid. So it says we wanna put the neutralizing fluid. This is gonna go on after it's cleaned and after it's rinsed with water. It's bubbly like soap. I'm gonna put it in the spray bottle. And then the actual cleaning fluid, we need to be able to dip it. Okay, here we go. From what I understand, we just dip the brush in here, get it all wet. So the electrical current combined with the chemical immediately removes the heat tent and oxide that's left behind by the weld. And by cleaning the surface and removing any of the iron from the outer layer, it's instantly pacifying the stainless and only leaving the protective chromium layer. There's a ton of industries that require this to be done. Examples are aerospace, if you're building planes, helicopters, etc., surgical implants and medical instruments, and any kind of food processing equipment. From kitchen items to breweries, anything like that, all requires the weld to be fully clean, no oxide layer, and fully pacified. So by following the directions, I'm just gonna quickly rinse this part off with some tap water, and then spray it with some neutralizing fluid. Now I set up this nice little makeshift table because I'm not about trying to rust my welding table. So from what I found on the internet, this is a good easy solution uh, that you can make just from grocery store items uh, to rust metal. So right here, just have white vinegar in a spray bottle, nothing else. We're gonna put that on first. And then this is gonna be the actual solution that rusts everything. Uh, this has about a tablespoon of salt. I'm just kind of guessing. My bottle's not that big, so I don't know. I feel like I want to make sure I have enough. You know, we all know salt rusts metal. Then hydrogen peroxide. Spill that wherever. I think we want about two thirds hydrogen peroxide, and then the last third will be uh, vinegar. Okay, back over here in the lab. Some directions had this step, some didn't, but since we're dealing with stainless, I'm gonna do this step, which was just to spray it down with the straight vinegar first, and then let that dry. Once that's relatively dry, we're gonna spray it with our solution and just let the camera keep running. Now I'm just gonna rinse it off with some water because this is any rust is probably light surface rust. I don't wanna rub it off. Of 
Well, and there you go. Turns out they're not crazy and there is a reason for it. A um, couple of things that surprised me. Uh, seems like in the uncleaned weld, it started getting some corrosion in the actual heat affected zone and then some spots right on top of the weld. Obviously this is stainless and I only had it sprayed and soaked for probably not even 10 minutes, but it already started corroding in the heat affected zone and a tiny bit on top of the weld. The part we cleaned with the TIG brush is untouched. Looks just like a cleaned non-oxidized TIG weld. And then on the other one, the weld over here, same thing, a little bit of corrosion in the heat affected zone and tiny splots on the weld, not as much on this one for some reason, but still in the heat affected zone starting to form. The spot we cleaned with the untouched brand new Scotch-Brite or surface conditioning disc um, from Empire Abrasives, good, fine, no corrosion that I can see so far. Um, but this, this method does change the actual structure of the weld, as you can see, because you have to grind it down. And then the wire wheel, which visually on appearance gives it the closest look to the electro cleaned weld, it was the worst out of everything. And probably because that wheel, like I mentioned before, had been used on other things and any little bit of iron deposit or anything that you're embedding down in the stainless, you're actually making it more corrosive. So that's the thing with mechanical cleaning. You always have to be careful of what you're using to clean that stuff out. And then even then it's not pacifies immediately. It needs to rebuild its natural corrosion resistance by letting the chromium come to the surface, which obviously this couldn't do because we embedded a bunch of iron into it. So thanks again to TIG brush for sending me out this unit. Unfortunately, it does have to go back after this, but it was a fun time testing it out and uh, seeing what this stuff is all about. I prefer my colorful stainless welds, but now I definitely see uh, a really lots of use cases where this would work. If I was gonna make some stainless art and it had to be outside in the elements all the time, I would definitely want my welds pacified. So yeah, uh, if you're new to my channel, I'm Justin Voss. I make welding and fabrication videos here on YouTube. So if you're new, please stick around and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought down in the comments and I'll see you next time.